Do you have any concerns that the president and his allies have essentially been able to define the Mueller report based on the four-page bar summary and that by the time whatever is released in the Mueller report, whether it's all 300 pages or 250 pages, whatever it may be, that people will essentially have already made up their minds and not care? Anderson, I do. It's highly unfair because they're attacking Adam Schiff's integrity without letting Adam Schiff or the American people read the report and read what Mueller found. You know, when Bill Clinton was investigated and the Ken Starr report took place, that report and all the grand jury hearings were public. People got to decide. That's all we're asking for before casting aspersions. Let the people at least read the report. Uh, obviously, that was a, a different, uh, was an independent counsel, a different kind of uh, sure. uh, setup. Congressman Quigley, you were in the room today when, when Chairman Schiff responded for uh, the calls <laughs> to, to uh, step down. He seemed clearly emotional toward the end, uh, seems to take it certainly personally. What's the, what has it been like within the party and, and what is the strategy going forward to push back on the president's narrative about the report? I think the first thing is to point out that it would be funny, if not tragically ironic, that Mr. Nunez led this uh, uh, argument today. Uh, when the Russians attacked our democratic process, Chairman Nunez leaped into action and attacked the intelligence community and the independence of the Justice Department with his memo and his now infamous ride to the White House. And the rest of the Republicans have just equal blame uh, involved here. During the middle of this investigation, uh, they dumped it and they shut it down. They refused to call key witnesses to subpoena key documents. They went along with a White House gag order so people didn't have to answer questions. Again, it's very cold comfort to the American public that the prosecutor investigating this couldn't find uh, a crime beyond a reasonable doubt. There is obvious evidence in plain sight and in previous court filings of collusion and obstruction. Congressman Kind of, I, I had uh, Steve Bannon uh, talk to him last night, former White House chief strategist. He said that he thinks the president is going to go what he described as, quote, full animal on his opponents now. He also said he thinks this next year is going to be the most politically divisive year in American history since the Civil War, including the Vietnam War. I, I want to play something that the president said tonight about Adam Schiff. Little pencil neck Adam Schiff. He's got the smallest, thinnest neck I've ever seen. He is not a long ball hitter. But I saw him today. Well, we don't really know. Uh, there could still have been some Russia collusion. <laughs> sick, sick. These are sick people. And there has to be accountability because it's all lies, and they know it's lies. They know it. Congressman Connor, I mean, uh, he's saying what Adam Schiff said today are all lies. Well, I had lunch with Adam uh, yesterday. He was a bit amused that the president was insulting his golf game and insulting his drive. But the serious issue here is why is the president attacking a separation of powers? And for Steve Bannon, who believes the president should be tough, and negotiating with Xi Jinping, and this president can't take the heat of a divided government and separation of powers and a tough press, that's American democracy. You know, Harry Truman said, if you can't take the heat, get out of the kitchen. And if this president's tough, he should respect the process. Congressman Quigley, I mean, without the full report, without the full facts, how do you fill in the blanks here? I mean, the, the, you, you say there's still evidence of collusion. Uh, obviously, it wasn't enough for, for, uh, for, for Mueller. Uh, the president hasn't seen the report, doesn't have the answers. He is already filling in the blanks anyway. How does a message of wait and see sell better than what the president is saying? I don't know what else to do but to file the necessary uh, subpoena next week when, when they don't comply with this. Uh, clearly, one of the things that we would get from this paper is the fact that there are gaps. We absolutely have no idea where the special counsel went on uh, money laundering, for example. Knowing that we know what we know about uh, the fact that Deutsche Bank did most of the financing for a Trump world uh, leading up to his presidency, and uh, that they were also fined $600 million for illegally laundering money with the Russians. What do we know? What's left to do? What's still in those gaps? 
and I think the answers will come with the report and a frank discussion with Mr. Mueller himself. Mm. I was struck by something, Frank, I want to get it because I wrote it, uh, th something you said in the Times, you wrote in the Times yesterday, you said, we Americans excel at many things but we're terrible at nuance and reactions to Robert Mueller's report, rather to the maddeningly succinct and vague summary of it that we've been provided, are the latest and some of the most vivid proof of that. It seems like the president and his supporters over the last several days, though, have been very successful in, I don't know, if exploiting that lack of, of, of detail or nuance or making the most of it as the right term. You know, we, I don't think we know how successful they've been because, I mean, they're certainly speaking to his base. And I think his base is feeling more fired up and confident about his righteousness than ever. But we, do we really know whether they've been successful with those people, the very few of them who are in the middle? But what distresses me and the reason I wrote that is, Two things can be true at the same time, and we seem unable in America right now to, to hold two thoughts at the same time. It is certainly the case that four pages from over 300 is ridiculous, but it can also be the case that there are some hurdles and concerns to releasing the whole report. Um, it can be the case that someone like Adam Schiff may be engaged in overbaked language and got too far out on the limb. It is not the case that he should be reprimanded and censored the way his colleagues are, are, are suggesting he should be. And I just want to say one thing, because I'm so outraged and embarrassed by the president and his pencil neck thing or whatever that is. He said it's all lies. Actually, everything Adam Schiff said is a proven fact. Right. The debate is whether those add up to this word collusion, which is so vaguely defined. But Adam Schiff gave a litany of proven facts that explain why people were so concerned about what was going on. And for Donald Trump to stand there and tell people it was all lies is shameful. No. Not surprising, though. I mean, he, he has been... I think down. not surprising, but we need to keep being, I don't know if shocked is the word, right. but we, we can't be so unsurprised that we let it roll off of our, off of our shoulders. Tim, I mean, uh, has there been a ton of nuance in American politics ever, really? I mean, you, th you know, we all think this is the, the roughest things have ever been. Obviously, you know, you go, you go far back, it was pretty rough. Well, two different things. One, the decibel level is high, but... But as Steve Bannon said to you, there have been periods in our history where the decibel level has been high. I'm, I'm shocked and dismayed that, uh, that he would say that we'd reach the pitch of the debate before the Civil War. My God, I hope he didn't say that with glee. Um, but there's the, also the question of nuance. We're he not, actually thinks he was saying that he thinks democracy is stronger than ever, that, that people are energized, people are involved. Well, I don't think that the 1850s is a model for what we want <laughs> for what our democracy should be. But the other thing I wanted to talk about was the issue of nuance. It's a beautiful piece today. But we've never been very good at nuance. I mean, after all, how many times in the Cold War have we asked presidents to have a doctrine? What's your doctrine? And a doctrine is not nuanced. No. It's a very direct form of, of policy. You do this, we'll do that. We tend to want very straightforward responses. We also like contests. We like winners and losers. Particip you don't get a participation medal in American politics. Um, and so I think this bleeds over into the way in which we talk about things like the Mueller report. The White House got a lot out of a four-page summary because that four-page summary said just what the president needed it to say, no collusion. The president had defined this entire investigation about collusion and not corruption. There's lots of corruption. It's just there wasn't direct collusion with the Russian government. Notice it's the Russian government, not with Russians. So I think when we get the details, we will see lots of unethical misconduct with Russians that should raise our hackles. And, and, and hopefully Americans won't be so over this that they'll pay attention to those details and those nuances. What's different on the nuance front, Anderson, is that we're more polarized than we were a decade ago, two decades ago. And there have been some fascinating surveys recently showing that if you're on the other side of the political aisle from me, I don't just think you're wrong, I think you're evil. Yeah. And that is informing people's language, the pitch of it. And I think Steve Bannon is exaggerating. I worry that he does take some weird delight in this. But we are talking to each other. Um, with a volume and a kind of vitriol that was not true 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years and, ago. And I just want to add that this is part of the product of the contract with America. In the 1990s, people entered the political fray saying, I'm not going to think when I get to Washington. I'm going to do exactly what you tell me to yeah. do. And if I don't, primary me out. Which means there's absolutely no benefit for a member of Congress, certainly from the Republican side, to compromise in Washington. 
because they're going to be primed out because they promised not to compromise. That has polluted and yeah, affected. But, I mean, there's plenty of Democrats who don't want to compromise either. Uh, but but, but uh, no doubt about that. But what I'm saying is that when you have the, the new Gingrich structure of the 90s has really changed American politics. And then the Tea Party was a reaction to Republicans not doing enough. But your point is really well taken, Anderson. There are Democrats who are just as strident. We're not going to get an infrastructure bill because of both Democrats and Republicans, because neither party is going to want to do something that maybe the other side takes credit right, for. Exactly. And that's where we are. And right. the Democrats least, don't want to give the president yeah, a quote-unquote yeah. win. Not going, not going into 2020. Yeah.